okay so not only is it my holiday is coming to an end soon not only that so meaning I probably won't be able to get all endings within this week but I don't know if I want to play this game anymore it's fucking hurting me so bad uh, okay like never mind that I found out a way how to get the last ending for rebirth and recovery which is um, so we have to don't engage Ben let Olivia sell the painting confront Liz and don't convert Olivia okay go with this don't engage we'll skip all that Skip, skip, skip. I was gonna make sure Olivia does not sell her painting. Wait, no. No, no. This is the second is let Olivia sell her painting. I whisper advice to Olivia. Oh, wait, no, no. Crap, crap. Okay, sorry, pick the wrong one. Okay, skip, skip all that. Okay, Let, let's get this done and we'll get we'll on the main story, which is what I really want to experience. Um, maybe what if I uh, what's the advice to Olivia? The Say nothing. Yeah, and then there's the whole conversation. Uh, we take care of each other. Okay, so con confront Liz. Okay, that's the important part. Confront Liz and don't confront Olivia. Oh god, I spent like three hours on this yesterday. Confront Liz. Okay, don't comfort. Don't comfort her. Oh? What's up, homie? Is your woman gonna be okay? I love that Olivia was staring pensively out the window as the passing cars, her reflection like a spectre from the past. I think she'll be fine. She just needs a moment to herself. I can tell you two need a moment alone. Very perceptive. Like I said, man, you're going to be perceptive to survive where I come from. you got to be perceptive to survive anywhere. That's a fact. So I'm guessing she did something messed up once. Yeah, pretty messed up, but not as, as what you described, but still pretty bad. I see. She can't just forgive herself. She's been struggling too, ever, every time it seems like she's right there, ready to get past it. Something happens to remind her. Damn, now I feel like it's my fault. It's not. Things just happen, and sometimes we look for reasons to keep falling feeling bad without realizing it. I still feel bad about things I've done or even things I wish I'd done and I guess like her, I can't forgive myself easily either. Ain't that, ain't that a bitch. Guess time don't heal all wounds. We just get numb to the pain. Indeed. You know what? To hell the city art contest. I've been feeling nervous about it all week and I get the feeling it's been worse for Olivia. Probably right, so what should we do? I don't know, maybe we could go back to your crib and play some video games or something. We'll find out about the results of the contest sooner or later. Sounds like a good idea actually. Yeah, and e even if neither of us break into the top 3 or 10, we still did pretty good for the night of the amateur art exhibition. How many people can say they met the Whalen dude? Not many. Exactly, so let's bounce. 
How are you feeling? Are we okay? So Ray and I were thinking we'd just leave and go back to our place to play video games. What about the results of the art contest? He figured we'll, we'd find out sooner or later. Not like we have to wait around here to getting worked up with anticipation. Good point. I've been nervous about it all week and I haven't been lacking what it keeps reminding me of. So then let's leave. Yes, right. Olivia and I find ourselves camping once again. Again? Oh, my mom's a bit weird. So I'm just gonna. And this time, she's singing Camp Grenade Granada with Stella and Rose, much to Riley's dismay. Oh, wait, wait, so we brought Riley along? Wait a minute, it stopped raining. Kids are swimming, kids are sailing, playing baseball, gee, that, that, that's better. Mother, father, kindly disregard this letter. I love that song. Psh, lame ass song. Oh, come on, Riley, aren't you ha a happy camper? I'll be a lot happier once we start playing some motherfucking boom up in this mountains. MF Doom. 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 Yeah, Doom. Uh, I think it's the. We only got one beer left. That, 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 I think it's that song. I still can't believe you're, you four already know each other. How come you didn't tell me before? We didn't know you knew them either. It's just another cosmic coincidence. Stars themselves conspired to bring us here together. Maybe they did. Or maybe it was something else. And we get Rosa who in, re, who returns it with a wink of her own. Okay, I got a screenshot. This is just adorable. Ha, a good ending. I think. Please tell me this is a good ending. I, I, I'm praying this is like a good ending. I did, me and Riley both. How did either of you do? Eh, we both did pretty good. I guess neither of us got into the top 3, but we did make it to the top 10, which is also good. Did you win anything? <sighs> Some gift cards to dynamos. Oh, well, that's better than nothing. Yeah, so we all went there for dinner. Even invited Liz and her boyfriend, Damien. Yes! They got back together. Okay, we got back together, we we hung out, we, our friendship is still solid. And Olivia had a whole pizza all to herself, girls got an appetite. They're the, they're the only pizza place left that still serves anchovies. I'll eat as much pizza as I want. All in all, we still did a pretty good at, at the amateur art exhibition, especially Olivia. With her income from streaming and selling art, and her designs for her new clients, Oh fuck, I, crap. She should be able to afford a school in our right, Olivia? I could now, but our school is still expensive and I wanted to be able to pull my own weight with rent and everything. Which is why I decided to accept a scholarship for persons with disabilities. Wait, really? I'm sorry you felt you had to do that. Believe me, it wasn't my first choice either, but don't feel bad. Don't feel sorry for me. I realize that constantly trying to overcompensate for my condition or even pretend it doesn't exist is still no better than letting it define who I am. I don't want to be ashamed of it anymore. And there really are people out there who just want to help out of genuine sympathy, then why not accept? Doesn't it make any less sense of less of a person. It's a very mature outlook. Seems like you two have grown a lot since last time. We have, we have, we have. in fact, for these two months have felt like an entire year in a certain way. It even felt like a second chance at our senior year. Rosa sighed, sighed wistfully. Sometimes I miss high school too. So does this mean you won't be doing any more art streams? I was really liking those. I still stream, but not as much as before. But I just have to get my art degree so I can become a teacher like Ladakan. I hope to teach at St. Helen one day. Although, even if I'm not able to, I can still be a tutor. God, I want a sequel for the... Oh, I want a sequel so bad.
Mister keeps interrupting me, thing, saying I shouldn't stream at all. <sighs> uh, I can do whatever I want because, um, because she can't decide things for me. Yeah, she gazed into the campfire. I still feel that fire within me, and I want to pass it on someday. An expression of belly contained excitement spread across Stella's cheerful demeanor. Yes, Stella, you can give me a tarot reading now. Ayo, do me first. Stella extends a deck for the Triceratops. Rosa, I, Rosa, I noticed, seems to just as curious and isn't gesticulating or muttering a prayer for this time. The tri Triceratops takes a card. What the fuck, the fool? Hell nah, I, I know your voodoo witchcraft ain't calling me no fool. But Riley don't understand, and upright, the fool signifies in innocence and new beginning. You're taking confident first steps in your own journey. Pfft, yeah, whatever. Okay, me now. She extends the deck and I draw a card. My hands trembling with excitement, it better not be the same card again. Position of the card causes me to feel immediate disappointment. Oh no, it's upside down again. You've drawn the tower, which I don't know what it is. It's upside down though. An upside down tower is a good thing. Uh, no offense, but the rules governing these cards seems kind of arbitrary. Why is it a good thing? An upside down tower, the tower signifies avoidance of impending disaster and shattering old foundations that were holding you back. Oh, that's something that's quite so I've been through for the past two months. Um, what was the impending disaster? Well, could have been something relating to your relationship based on the last card he drew. Olivia turns to gaze my way with a with a look that is difficult to read. I hope she didn't think I was keeping something from her. Okay, your turn now. The girl takes a card and with confidence looks in her eye. What is it? Zaw The Jojo reference! Uh This is why I say I'm him. We both share the same mindset. Yes, it's, yes, it is dork. Okay, but what does it mean? She drew the wall in the upright position. Her cut signifies fulfillment and completion. Oliver laughs tri happily in triumph. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, but I couldn't have achieved it without Inko's help. It means everything to to me to hear you say that. But I guess. I guess I couldn't have helped you myself without advice from good friends, most of whom are present right now. I nod to Stella and Riley. Then I turn to Rosa. They told me what I need, I, what I most needed to hear when I most needed it. The Latina diner pulls me to a hug that feels like a constrict wrapping around my chest. Rosa! The get a girl shouts loud enough for me to feel it in my feet. Que pasa? I thought I told you not to make a move on my man. Frantically, I tried to calm her down. Oh, was, no, it's not like that. In cold. Yes? Got you. Everyone starts laughing. S Psych! Did you, did you all just prank me? It was Olivia's idea. We planned it when you were using the public restroom. Sorry. Oh well, hardy har har. It was worth to see the look on your face. Yeah, and I got all I got it on camera. Say world star. Oh god, I remember world star back in the day. Oh god. I'm mean, I'm getting hit with like memories of the old old ye days. Oh. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling need, my needing to use the bathroom, and now I was gazing upon more at the stars. I couldn't help but feel a divine radiance from from them tonight as though as well was well in, with the world it was as though Olivia and I had diverted from our intended course momentarily but we're now back on track though the course was different the destination was still the same she had the strength and confidence I could almost feel radiating from her now my heart swelled with pride though now for her and not merely just for myself Inko? Olivia poked her head out of her out tent, a look of concern on her face. Yes? What are you doing? I 
no, you can't. I can't sleep without my personal space heater next to me. So I had has to use the bathroom. Then I found myself gazing at the stars again. Mind I gaze? Mind if I gaze with you? She held. She held out her arm to pick her up. Bending down, scoop her up. I left my girlfriend with a smooth motion, all without grunting. Oh. I carried her to the bench and set her down gently. We hold hands and gaze up together. On those nights, I could study to exhaustion. I would wake up in bed not remembering that you had carried me. I got good at carrying you without too much effort. Thanks, thanks to me hitting the college gym three to four times a week. She grabs my left arm and makes a show of squeezing my bicep and tricep. How big and strong we've gotten. I can't help but preen a little under her admiring gaze. Good to know there's more of you to eat if we ever get stranded and I need to cannibalize a squishy skinny. She sizes me up with a predatory gaze, wagging her eyebrows and licking her lips as though she, to remind me of my place in the food chain beneath her. Swell. Don't pout. If it makes you feel better, I could probably... Never eat you. How reassuring. She wraps her arms around my right arm and pulls her head on my shoulder. That doesn't make you feel better than this. Well, you still make me feel like the luckiest unlucky person in the world. And I meant it when I said I wouldn't have made it this far without you. I was just returning the favor. Without you, I wouldn't be who I am today. I'd just be some other unthinking midwit getting all his opinions from favorite blogs and four hour long video essays. Parasynical mention? Parasynical easter egg? Uh, worse, I I just thought of something. If Parasynical ever existed in this universe and he was a, he was like a dinosaur, would he be para, para, a paradactyl para, parasy, parasynical? Para? I mean, it could fit. Worse, I, could, I couldn't I could have grown a spine and learned to resist the urge to conform to some consensus. You gave me strength and confidence when I most needed it. I'm just sorry it took me so long to return the favor. What do you mean? I mean, for the longest time, I got more out of our relationship than you did, and for that, I'm sorry. I felt like you got more of out of what we had. If anything, I have always worried I was the one not fully replicating what you gave me. You took care of me when no one else would. You fed and sheltered me and loved me. And I'm worried I was taking advantage of you. You won. I was taking advantage of you. How? It was gratifying to think of myself as your provider and protector. I... I liked thinking of you as weak and helpless and dependent on me. It made me feel strong and empowered, and there were times when I could have encouraged you to be stronger. But I didn't. What times? When Mia was bullying you and I had to go all white night to, and protect, and try to protect you from her, only so I could look like a jackass and embarrass us both. Or when Mia chased us into the elevator and I took the key when you pre-offered it, I shouldn't have done that. You could trust Lanarkin more than you could ever trust me, but I like the idea of, of taking from you that one thing that made you a gatekeeper in your own right. The elevator was a sanctuary that you shared with me when I drew doodles with you. I wanted unlimited access to it. But most of all, I'm sorry for not staying, saying the right things that day. I found you in the rain. What should you have said? That Ben or cruel fate didn't make you do what you did. You did it, and you were merely using such an excuse as a... as a crutch. None of that is untrue. I still feel bad about it. I know you told me I would have to learn to accept it because I couldn't forgive myself, and you're right. I did it to myself as much as I did it to you, and I can at least own that fact. So then why didn't you tell me about all of that? I struggle to not break eye contact at first I gaze, as she gazes back, telling me she already knows the dreaded answer. 
because I pitied you because of my condition no because of your lack of confidence you're truly gifted and to see you so gifted and so unsure of yourself made me pity you far more than just seeing you in your wheelchair she hangs her head and sighs I wanted your pity despite all my in Insistence to the contrary that I didn't want pity for anything deep down I did and I hated myself for it I thought if I had to be pitied by anyone it could at least be a nice guy kind of sweet and caring and on the day of your of our first date I felt like I could finally accept being that weak helpless person you saw I even thought it wouldn't be so bad as long as you were there I see but more than that, the other reason I held back that day in the rain was because I wanted you to like me. It's like you said, I did want that attention and I didn't care how I got it. And I wanted attention from you the most of all. I suppose that's partly my fault for being such a sundere. You know, I'm not enough of a weep to yet, yet, yet to know what that means. It means when the romantic interest is taking, is acting like a standoffish bitch. Okay, but for future references, you said it, not me. She nibbled on my shoulder playfully. I think you're being too hard on yourself. Sure, you wanted my attention, but I remember you always working for it. Like when you dared to draw me to, when you dared to draw doodles with me, or when you beat Ben at photographing the wedding. Then there was when you didn't side with me or Liz. You both told us off. I always thought you were headstrong and confident, and it's only because you encouraged me to be so. I didn't realize I was doing that. You always were, and that's why I feel like I shortchanged you. Maybe you did, and maybe you didn't. Because, but for all of people now to fret about the past doesn't make sense to me. You helped me look forward the, towards the future these past mo two months, and I wouldn't be here now without you. Maybe this isn't as climatic as us going to the winter formal or prom, but I don't care. I'm happy now. I got my boyfriend, my self-confidence, my promise to Lalekin fulfilled, my streaming career, and most of all, I feel in control of my life, and as I can own who I am for better or worse. All my past mistakes are, just, are mine just as much as accomplishments. So maybe you should get over it it already. You're still young. Some people might go their whole lives without getting the personal agency we have now. Now shut up and kiss me already. Ending 4 for the flame bearer. And that's the end of rebirth and recovery. I'm not joking, that is the end. We, we did all endings yesterday. This is the end, one ending I couldn't get. But, now, Let's get on to the main story where none of this actually happened and we are still processing Ladakin's death. Oh my god, I can't fucking take this shit no more. This hurts. But before we start, let, let me take a sip of water. <clears throat> Damien and Randy were waiting for us at the crib, the older man looking over Olivia with worry. When your friend told us Sophie and I were beside beside ourselves, I'm fine, and uh, uh, Randy just... Randy didn't really hear her as the instant her car door was open, her legal guardian put her up into one hell of a bear hug. Come on. I'll get you a kid some hot cocoa. 
Damien watched on with a smile of relief as his father hauled her over his shoulder and marched to his house. You guys want to stick around? Benny's still in school. We, we, we'll, we'll have the consoles to ourselves. It's pretty early, all things considered. Sure, I'd, I'd love some hot chocolate right now. Liz, I like to really, but the council still needs to prepare the arrangement for Latikans. Well, you know, maybe I'll come by after if I can. All right. Well, if you do, I'll make sure there's cocoa for you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I recently noticed I've not been doing their voices because it's very complicated. But I'll try to do it in the stream. With that, this drives off the, down the street. Come on, let's head inside before we turn into popsicles. Also, I noticed I got three scores and Olivia still at one. Settling into the well-worn couch, I noticed a distinct lack of a baryonyx. Where's Olivia? Randy chimes in from the kitchen, busying himself with an old-fashioned kettle. She wanted to rest on her bed for now, boys. Give her some time. No one can resist hot cocoa drink weather like this, especially how I make it. Never had homebrew hot chocolate, but if it's anything like his cooking, then it must be some good stuff. After a few minutes, Randy comes out with a tray. Oh, I l okay. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. But I'm, I love these cups. Here you go. Here you guys go. He passes around a few Christmas. Mugs labeled with the family's names and leaves the last one on top of a nearby drawer. You're gonna have to be Vinny for a bit. You cool with that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Randy. Man, you look cold. We are out there long. It's true. By now, the snow on my jacket melted away, and my clothes are chilly and soaked. Feel free to take a load off until you warm warm up. I'll be in my bedroom resting. Holler if you need anything else. He gives Damien a pat on my back and leaves. The mug is hot to touch, but it's a welcoming feeling to warm up my icy fingers. I take a moment to gently blow air on the beverage to cool it down before moving it to my lips. Yeah, it's pretty good. Damien is chugging his. He finishes the swig and sets the glass down. That must have been half of it in one go. Well, there are multiple ways to enjoy anything. Today, events and weathers, I really needed this. Another sip. It really is helping me, up, help, helping warm me up. I didn't even notice how cold I was. Hey, Vinny. Yeah, you good? I'm holding it together, yeah, but still a bit sca scattered. I don't blame you. Hey, Pops doesn't want you venturing back to the tur tundra out there. You up for a game or something? He dresses for the entertainment setup. No, but go ahead, I'll watch. Damien thinks for a second. The, the few gears in his head turning in conflict. Really, I don't mind. Alright, I'll get set up. Damien sets his game up, losing several mismatched cases for the right CD and giving the screen a good th thump to get it to work properly. Grabbing a controller, he turns on the Xbox One, selects something called Rock Ring. Odd Hutch, I don't know what he's referencing to, and settles down into his grooves on the couch. This was my favorite in the series. After a minute or two of gathering a full lobby, the Dilophil Spino Dino picks his class and begins his virtual rampage. Only a few minutes in, he managed to get the first kill. I just get a bit burnt out for the day, getting ti uh, pretty tired actually. Hey, Inko? Yeah? Olivia didn't come back with her wheelchair. Did, did something happen? Yeah, she isn't taking Ladikin's passing well. Man. Well, I'm glad you were there for her. Mm. My eyes remain on the screen, lost in the vibrant violence that some in-game announcer proclaims Daniel Damien's digital massacre. On his part, Damien... Damien's frills wavered like crazy and looked as if his arms also wanted it to wave in victory. You wanna talk about it? I don't wanna take up your time, Damien. Come on, man, we've known each other for a while. You can be honest with me. 
not sure where to begin really. Lattica was really cool. I didn't have the right words for it. Somehow I think I'm unqualified to speak on it compared to Olivia. She knew him better than I ever did. It was important to her, yeah. We talked about it for a bit before Liz picked us up, but I'm worried I'm not much help. Well, that's what we're here for, right? To help out in any way we can. Best thing to do is to be ourselves for her, and she'll eventually go through the motions her own way. Yeah, that makes a surprising amount of sense. I slowly look up from my mug and over to Damien. And you make it sound so easy too. He briefly meets my gaze before returning his attention to the screen. I know I'm not the smartest guy around, but I do know Olivia. We don't share parents, but she's still my older sister. Older sister? Her birthday is first, duh. Uh, I know Olivia. She'll be able to manage. But how are you managing? Me? Trying to sort the maelstrom of emotions running rapid, rampant in my head is overwhelmed, I guess. I wish I had gotten to learn more from him. Olivia could probably recite some of his lessons by heart. She probably could. I remember the first time she got to work with some special pains in his class. She was just ec ecstatic. She came home a mess, covered all kinds of blue and greens and leaving tracks behind wherever she went. When mom saw her carpet vandalized, she threw her right in the backyard and hosed her off. I ended up joining in because it looked fun. Eyeing the hallway leading to her room, a part of me wants to see if she's alright. A part that simply wants to be closer to her again. Damien looks back again, the unspoken question clearly written across his arched eyebrows. What about Olivia and you? Speaking of, uh... I may have told Olivia that I liked her. About time. Huh? What? You two stuck together like glue ever since the summer barbecue. I mean, come on now. Anyone with half a brain could see that you were becoming more than friends. All the signs were there. Although it does, it, it does worry me a little. Why is that? Well, think about it. Your teacher just passed away. You're both wrecks right now. What if it's just that suspension bridge thing? I don't know, man. It only just happened. You're right. Sorry. I do like Olivia, I know that. I guess I'm a little scared of the future. How so? This is a bunch of things. I still don't care about Olivia. Or maybe friendship in general. When I first arrived in St. Hammond, I never, I never really had any friends like you guys. So to suddenly be involved in all this, I don't know. I think I get it, yeah. Things can be a little dramatic around here. One way to put it. So what's different about your old friends? Never really had it. Well, it's not true. I had friends, but they were like... Day friends, you know? Classmate, classmate friends, yeah. I got a bunch. And your folks constantly moving means that only ever lasted like a year? Tops? Yeah. Am I a day friend? No way! You kept our parties and everything. In fact, look. He points to the subtle discolored patch on my jeans where Vinny's acid punch had failed to completely wash off. We got you marked. Thanks. It means more than you know. Ha, <laughs> to be honest, I always had a good feeling about you. Though you... You'd be a decent addition to the group, but to see Olivia actually start opening up around you two months ago, that was unthinkable. All those years, I was trying alone, you know. Made it all worthwhile, not to take credit or anything. I'm just surprised to see her happy after so long. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna stretch my hand. Oh, it fucking hurt. Oh. Shit. Oh, this is a bad crack. <sighs> Moments of Olivia and I flashed together in my into my head. Good, bad, everything in between. It all co culmi cul culminates into a single image of her staring up at me with that smile of hers. <sighs> me too. Hard to believe that she's been dealing with so much inside when I first met her. 
Well, in girls, some people just have a lot of problems they hide from the world. For example, he puts the controller down and shifts to look me in the eye. His character's instantly sniped. That hot chocolate gave me a tummy ache. I'm being serious. That was serious. It can be little things like that. Little stresses that add up. No, it doesn't bother me. But someone else? It might, I might just ruin it. I might just about to ruin them. If you are trying to get with Olivia, I'll give you a nickel's worth of advice my dad told me. If a girl likes... If a girl you like asks to wear your shirt around at 2am and to bake cookies, she's an absolute keeper. Mm, that's some good advice. Just don't break her heart, yeah? Wouldn't dare to think of it. Damien offers me a fist bump to which I happily replicate. A door creaks open. Both of her heads turn back at a sound. She kneels in the doorway to her room, le leaning against the side railing. <laughs> Damien nods to me and continues his game. The ambient gunfire and controller clicking fills the silence. I take the hint and stand up slowly approaching Olivia and as she tries to shuffle down the hallway. She's completely upright in a display of pure confidence. Even her tail is upright as to amplify her dignity. I'll have to tell her how cute that is when I'm not so drained. I'm wordlessly offered her a hand and she accepts it. With her on my shoulder, I walk the both of us towards the living room couch and plop down on it with her. Oh, here. I lean forward to grab a hot... Uh, her cocoa from the coffee table. Most of the warm hair is gone by now. Guess I can go warm it up in the microwave for her. Hmm. She's tugging my arm. Come on, it's cold. She starts leaning harder against me to keep me from getting up all the way. Alright, jeez. I give her the mug and she goes to start sipping instantly. I was going to warm. My voice dies as I feel her settle against my leg with her relaxed hum. Her body relaxes more and I'm allowed to sit up enough for her to settle in by my shoulder. She's warm. The two of us watch Damien's game continue. Olivia continues sipping down her drink, letting one hand free from the mug. Her hands find its way to mine and her fingers curl around each other's. Damien plays a few more games. I don't really keep track of how well he does. I said that Damien's definitely a, a CSGO player. He finishes one last match and yawns, stretching back over to the over the couch. Alright, that's probably enough for me. I'm gonna get going, give you two some space. Okay. Mm. Damien gets up from the couch and slides his controller near the cabinet where it lied before. On his way out, he starts to look at me right into my eyes. Hey, keep things chill. Don't do anything stupid. Alright? Yeah. He nods and heads off to the depths of the house. And just like that, it's quiet once more. Is she asleep? Hey. Hmm? I, uh, don't think you've seen my room before, haven't you? Not at all. Would you want to see? I'd love to. I watch her blush. Am I getting good at this? I, I, did I get a riz? Okay, uh, let me just, let, just walk me there. Similar to before, I help Olivia off the couch and we shuffle our way towards her room. Oh! Oh! Oh wait, no, no, shut up! Yo, I love her! This is that a... Is that a... Nintendo home system? It's a fucking Nintendo home. Ooh, I was expecting her room to be a crab, but wow! I'm not sure what I was expecting Olivia's room to look like, but I'm surprised. It's the air that hits me—a strange mix of a heavy, thick floral candle trying to best to cover the most, the almost nostalgic scent of art supplies, band posters and painting all of dinosaur cover a lot of her wall space like the room is her own personal canvas looking at my uh, my my cupboard which is covered completely in 
prints from conventions and from VTuber meetups, I, I have a feeling my one, it, my canvas is shit. Her desk sat beneath the window again. What space that wasn't covered by faded looking paper was instead covered in dried up paint. Right next to that, a dresser holding up a decades old television and a retro gaming console. I wanna know what that is over there. All in all, it reminds me of the rooms they show in older high school movies. So, where do you want? Just on the floor is fine. I gently lower Olivia to the floor, letting myself sit cross leg next to her in the process. So, what do you think? I think it suits you. I figured you weren't having chess. I got this really soft rug and a beanbag chair over there. She gestures to a beat up lump in the corner near a large lamp. Olivia pulls something out of her head. It's a laptop, opens to a music program. But I don't recognize any of these songs or bands or albums. There's a really pretty big track list. What music do you listen to? I'm sort of a closeted metalhead. I knew she was a metalhead! I, f I knew it. I, I knew it. It's been on my head but I never said it. I knew it. Whenever I'm low, I put on some air on a full blast while I do chores or art. Generator head, super death, iron tube, you name it. What do you listen to? Please let us get in. Don't lock us away. Mumble rap. I listen to mumble rap. If that scratches your brain then. Anyway, my dad was super into heavy metal when I was a kid. He got me into it. When Dave and I would be playing out in the yard and his mom would be making lunch, our dad would be in the garage blasting heavy metal while they worked on the car. Working on cars? Yeah, my dad and uncle Randy would fix up, uh, I mean, Randy would fix up some cars. She clears her throat. Huh, I think it's the first time I heard you call him Uncle Randy. Yeah, I guess I call him that sometimes, along with Auntie Sophia. You call him Auntie Sophia? Your right, ha your right hand comes off? What do you... A villain lunges to chomp at my hand and I have a moment to check on my fingers just in case. He was joking. So was I. But yeah, I listen to a lot of this. Wanna hear any? She offers me to the trackpad. Anything I see, huh? So, what kind of music is B-flat? Music is a bit actually lame. I have a feeling I know what it is. I can't remember. I can't remember the song. But I feel like this is a reference to the song that goes to. The, the, I don't know. Uh, Wait, here, there's actually something else. Something else? Something nobody else gets to see. I'm going to show you my chest. Ch chest box. Chest box. Here it is. Look. Olivia holds out a small wooden box. There are two rusted metal latches that have been have long since aged past their use. I can't see it quite well in the dim lighting, but I think if I were to hold it up in the sunlight, I see a thin layer of glitter glue coating the whole thing. It's been painted carefully with very thoughtful attention to tones. Also, I there's one thing I. I forgot, where is Guts? What could be inside? Honestly, no guesses come to mind. Could be anything. What are you waiting for? Open it. I open it. I carefully open the lid. Ooh. Oh, inside is Olivia's chest. I mean, the box filled with the various valuable, various baubles and trinkets. Let's see. We got a paintbrush. I think a marble. Some weird circles. I'm assuming this is a lighter. I think a dice. I think it's a shell. I think a baby tooth. And I think this is a picture of her. What is all this? Eh, it's like my own little hoard. I've been saving up a lot of these things through the years. Nobody else has has ever seen it. She holds out the box for me to take. It's heavier than it looks. This must be some high quality material. 
With the box in my hand, I sit on the end of the bed. Olivia manages to crawl her waist up to sit beside me. She reaches inside to grab. But... What are these? There's a couple of cool rocks I found around. I like how they look, so I kept them. I grab one of the rocks to give it a closer look. It's grey with a brown lines all over it and smooth to the touch. It'd be perfect skipping stone. That's one of my Why the fuck would you Why would you know how it tastes? Why why would you put it in your mouth in the first place? That's one of my favorites. It tastes like salt. How do you know that? I tasted it. Oh what's this? Oh, this used to be Uncle Randy. Oh wait, I just forgot I can interact? Is this a graving green thing? She shakes her head with a soft, soft mouth. Not really. He said it's hard to steal and hide stuff that looks unique. Really, I think he thought it looked cool and not tacky. Well, I guess it looks cool. You would. What are these? There's a couple of rocks I found. Oh. Okay. Uh, what was this? What are these? There's a couple. Oh, this same thing. Okay, what about this? Oh, I love this little guy. What's that? Let me show you. Oliver remember through the box and plucks out a tiny hexagon. Oh, is it like the, I think Baku, ba Baku da? I, I can't remember the name, but I know, I know it. She places the plastic ball onto it and, and before, before my eyes, it transforms into a little robotic looking dinosaur. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my brother has one, it's, the, it's like black, it's green, and it's like a mix of purple. I think it's like a dragon or something, I don't, I don't know. Ooh! This is a... Ga... Gab... Gabu... Khan... Dynanoid to be exact. I was hooked on the show when I was younger and always... Asking to get the toys for my birthday and Christmas. Vinny got the rest of my old collection. This one was my always my favourite, so I kept it here. Okay... Well, what about this brush? Paintbrush? Very important paintbrush. Oh, Ladakin gave it to you, didn't he? Oliver's lip turned upwards slowly as each bristle of the brush flips away from her thumb. Though she averts her eyes from it, I can see the green of her scaly cheeks turn red. Sorry, just got sentimental for a moment. This is the first brush I ever had. Dad gave it to me on my fifth birthday. Her tone faltered slightly. Dad always asked me to make him little drawings. And every time I finished one I, and gave it to him, he'd tell me it looked amazing. I could barely draw a circle back then, but he still got still gush over them and... And? She shakes her head. I think he might put them in some scrapbook. I don't know, but he kept them all. Olivia looks back to me, her embarrassment turning into bashfulness. Thanks. I want to know what this is. It's a picture of Olivia's chest, I mean, of Olivia at the shore. This is from last summer. Dad had a weekend off and we, got, we, went up, we all went swimming together at the beach. The sun was setting and decided to take a picture of her since it was a nice view. Plus, I felt pretty. Maybe uh, we could go there sometimes. Maybe, yeah. She places the photo back in the box. Oh, someone's like grayed out. Can't do it. Oh, hey. Oh, some of these look really cool. Of course they do. I picked all these out myself. Where'd you get these? Picked one up whenever I see one. They're like a dime. In the, like they're a dime or a dozen. Okay, then here's the last one. The teeth. What's that? That's my first tooth. Oh, I've never seen maybe dino teeth up, up close before. It's so tiny and sharp. What's that one? That's my 58th tooth. Your teeth grow back? You don't? Humans. Minutes ago, go by as Olivia continues showing off a personal little horn. A tiny object that Olivia chosen to keep with her this whole time, eagerly explaining the significance of every little piece of her she's got locked away in here. By the time we're done, we're 
she's resting her muzzle on my shoulder. It's been a crazy long day. I'm pretty exhausted myself. Can you... Can you put this bag on the drawer dresser there? Sure. I gently move her off my shoulder, much to her muffled groans of protest. I then carefully place the box back where it was, it was on the dresser. A small friend poked his nose curiously through the bars of his cage. Hey little guy, long time no see. Were you napping? The black and white murette replies with a series of squeaks. It's guts! Yo, my prayers have been answered. It's guts. I have to think he's saying that he's glad to see me. Hey Olivia. Oh, I'm pretty exhausted too. Bed's definitely off limits. That leaves either the floor or the couch outside. Or the beanbag chair that looks inviting right now. I slump into the beat I slump into it, the beats inside crunching under my weight as I settle in. It's soft. Looks a bit like paint on Olivia's hair. Does Olivia lay on this while she works? As I start to drift off, the last thing my very eyes hit notice of is Olivia sleeping soundly on her bed. With how emotionally draining this whole day has been has been for us, it's nice to see her looking so peaceful. I begin to stir for my sleep cushiony slumber. It feels like something heavy across my stomach, stopping any viability to move. Please tell me, please, please. Please don't be shit. Oh god, okay, 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 okay. Did someone throw a weighted blanket on me? Actually, if it feels like whatever on me is vibrating. What is it? Olivia? She, she's on me. Yes! Yes! I can't cry anymore. I can't cry anymore and I blame the bot for it. Ah. Ah. My entire head grows hot as my brain tries to process the situation. How I'm... Where as she's just as pretty close to mine. I can feel her rhythmic breathing against my body. It's deep, slow, and a subtle but noticeable rumble each exhale. If I focused hard enough, I could probably feel her heartbeat. Maybe she slipped crawled onto the beanbag and didn't realize that I was on it. I probably I should probably wake her up so she can get back to her bed. Anytime I try to move her lips cling tighter around my body like a boa constrictor with all but Olivia's tail wrapped around me any attempt of escaping holds her hold is fruitless Olivia looks even peaceful than she did on my bed on the bed maybe she does know that I'm here I'll leave her be last thing I want to do is make her a cranky gator with my hand free I managed to grab my phone Checking the time the digital clock says it was only 5 minutes past 4.30. Plenty of time to continue my nap. I nestle my head back into the beanbag and the, let the feeling for Olivia rumbling lull me back to sleep. This feels nice. My morning alarm lulls me from my sleep and into the world of the living. And I'm sleep spending the night at Olivia's place. Randy and Sylvia thought my parents would actually be worried that I stayed with strangers for the night. When my folks hadn't answered their phones, Sophia was left fuming. Randy didn't look as bothered though, and the two calmed down after I made something up about a business trip. Honestly, I'm probably right anyway. On the upside, I got to spend the night with Olivia. Last night, we even turned the living room to some kind of blanket and pillow fort. It felt childish to huddle up on the floor and with Olivia and watch her play old computer games on the outdated TV. But I had more fun than I like to admit. Well, let me go to the toilet.
Okay. Okay. But now that Fridays were around, there was time for school. Olivia's wheelchair was out of commission until Rennie could go get a replacement, meaning she have to miss out today. Given the state of both her emotion and wheelchair, it pained me to have to go without her and leave her all alone. Honestly, I don't want to be alone in my cold and empty house either. Miss Sophia is one hell of a cook. Last time she made a delicious meatloaf. Guess I now know who Olivia got her culinary skills from. I'll try more Olivia's cooking. I rise from the couch, pulling the spare blanket off of me. The pains let me sleep on the couch, but at some point, Olivia must have dragged herself from her room to join me. As I, as I try my best to get up without waking her, I pull out my phone to check the, the time. It's about the same time I normally wake up. I'm kind of impressed with my own internal clock. You awake, son? I jump as Randy makes his presence known be behind me. His hands idly button up a floral shirt as he motions ahead towards the unconscious gator lying on the couch. Guessing he has the early shift. Uh, she wasn't there when I went to sleep. Don't worry, I'm not accusing you. Damien's already up and the kitchen's got cereal. Don't be late for school. I nod response and take a few minutes to put my jacket and glasses on head before heading to the kitchen. Even if I didn't remember where it was, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard to find. Damien's busy slurping honey oats like a jet engine. Oh, Inko, you hungry? Before I even replied, the Dilophosaurus jumped out of his chair and makes for a nearby cabinet, procuring another bowl and spoon which is which he slides across the table. Thanks. Most important meal of the day, man. Eat up. He gestures for the half gallon of milk and box of cereal on the table. I take a seat across from Damien and pour myself a bowl. Normally, I skip breakfast on account of getting ups upset stomach during PE. Then again, that could be my PTSD with the burrito stalking. With, ha with spoon in hand, I get a cereal scoop of cereal and begin eating. You know, as far as cereal goes, it's a little bland. I had a guess you'd probably avoid any of the colourful sugar filled cereals to prevent Vinny from bouncing off the walls. More than he usually does, at least. I continue to enjoy, I continue to enjoy my bowl of cereal with less ferocious haste than Damien. It's not long before we're both done, and Damien stands up without any intent of cleaning up after himself. This should be getting here any minute now, so we can wait outside. Sounds good. I take the time to rinse off our dishware in the sink before anything else. Damon looks a little guilty as he realizes what I'm doing. Finally, with the breakfast dealt with, we get ready to head outside into the cold, harsh world. As I grab my backpack by the couch, I take one more glance at my slumbering girlfriend. Finally. Girlfriend. She's taking up the entirety of the couch now, the blanket we shared falling away as she spreads out into the spot I was just at. Should I should I give her a kiss goodbye? Or maybe fix the blanket for her? Okay, so I got a place to save, yeah. Okay. Tuck it in properly, this is the best I can do. Her uh, brow scrunches up as I can see the goosebumps spreading on her arms. Leaning down, I take the edge of the blanket and bring it back over her. As I turn away from her, something catches my wrist. It's Olivia's head. With blurry eyes full of sleep, she looks at me, suddenly asking me to say, Oh, Liz is here. His words make Olivia tighten her grip. Painfully tight. Oh hey, I'll be back here. I'll be back tonight, okay? She's fighting the stay with her eyes fluttering and hand grip waning. Uh, Olivia, promise. Her hands adjust the blanket again. Promise. I think she accepts that as she lets herself slump back onto the couch. Inko, sorry, I had to do something. Damien huddles himself and charges into the cold right into Liz's car. She flings the passenger door open in time for him to leap in and close it again. 
I get one last look at Olivia before I shut the door and hurry down as well. Aw oh, man, the car is nice and warm. Morning, Inko. You really stayed the whole night? Liz start, starts down the road and towards the school. God, how did how are we so like, happy and cheery after fucking Lanigan's death? That that chapter was huh. Morning. Yeah, I did want to be alone in the snow. Is that why you smell like Damien's deodorant? His clothes are looking pretty ragged by now too. Shut up. I have to get a shower and a fresh change of clothes as soon as possible. Damien and Liz keeps the conversation moving and my mind starts to wander. Man, poor Olivia. Who knows when a replacement chair is coming in. Could be anywhere from a few days to weeks. And she's just going to be stuck home that whole time. Why I still need to go to school. It wouldn't be the same. We won't get to be together in the art room after school. Oh god, it's just gonna be me and Ben in the art room. Nah, do, do Ben and I take the same class? Yes. It's just gonna be me and Ben in the husk of a classroom where Lanarkin used to be all alone, just talking, making fun of my bad paintings. Just us. Man, wait till Lanarkin finds out we're all alone. Damn it. Well, I guess he knows by now then. Man, it wouldn't be the same. Yo, Inko, you good? Seems pretty down all of a sudden. I'll be fine. I appreciate you guys, really. This has been the best school year of my life so far. So thanks for being my friends. Hey, you're cool too. What brought this on? Damien? Uh, um, oh. This last school year has been pretty special. Hanging out with you guys so much has changed in such a short amount of time. Even if things are shaking right now, it's really been worth it. I have hopes for what comes next. Me too, Liz. Silence falls over the car as Liz takes off. Damien's hand is only occasionally swatted away from the radio knob as we all sit in companionable silence. It's nice taking a different scenic route to school. Oh, <laughs> At school, the atmosphere is undeniably different. So it's as talkative and rowdy as ever, but there's less of it. I don't know, maybe it's just my mind playing with me. There's colour as well, like it's been drained just a bit. Layers of snow blanketing everything outside is partially to blame. Man, I was just looking forward to making a snow snowman this year. Maybe I'll be feeling it later. Swally was as stern as ever in his class, whether it's just that he doesn't care or his own form of respect is beyond me, but his head was just a little tighter than his norm than normal today. Man, too many feelings today. Moping isn't gonna get me anywhere. I'm halfway down to, to second period when the question of Ladakan's replacement strikes me. Will we just be getting a few days off? There's no way we can just find a new teacher on such short notice. Class is probably going to be on hold for a while. His name is still on the door plate when I enter. Inside, many of the students chatted with each other normally. Some nervously glanced up to the teacher's desk. I take my normal seat by the vacant desk Olivia would normally be stationed. Here is gonna suck without her. Looks like I got to look forward to today is lunch with Damien and Liz. Man, the whole day's just, just gonna drag on. I, I wanna go back to Olivia. The bell rings. An unfamiliar in a, an unfamiliar woman in a suit walks in, clipboard in hand. She nods, she nods at us all and starts reading me mechanically from some script. The substitute tries her best, but there's only so much you can do. You can get done on your first day on such short notice and ju with just some paper to read out. Her tone doesn't help, drawn out and empty, and I feel myself losing focus. I look down at my half-taken notes. Shoot, Olivia will probably kill me if she... Do, 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 do. 
do 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 do. The substitute looks at the class phone in frustration as she walks over to answer his call. The, they both mumble back and forth and for a few seconds later before we got an Inker Cog Cheeto in his class. I raised my hand. The substitute thumbs me towards the door. Office called. We are wanted. We are, what would the office want with me? Definitely not the painting. My footsteps echo on the hot, cool town on the way to the principal's office. I heard once that they made the halls to the faculty office longer on purpose to scare you. Although that must have been form of an old comic strip. The effect was there, however, as each of my reverberating steps sent a spike through of unease through my call. When I finally stood before the principal's office, the feeling of unease peaked. Why this bitch gotta ruin everything? What? Yeah, if if you didn't exist, the world will start moving. The trees will be greener. Animals will start populating. The bees' population will grow. Every extinct animal will come back. Animals that are about to be extinct will suddenly be not extinct. It's all because of you. Slowly I opened the door and inched myself inside. The principal was sitting behind her disorganized desk blanketed with numerous sheets. And between me and her, me, her, me and her, Mia and Ben looking back at me from their own chairs. You wanted to see me, Ms. Principal Scaler? Yes, Mr. Yino, that's a matter we need to discuss. She moves into the third chair in front of her. I take a seat as instructor next to Mia, who's more or less acting as a personal barrier between me and Mia. Oh, Ben, next to Ben. Mr. McKnight has informed me that there was an incident between you and Miss Morty earlier this month, one in which school property was severely damaged. Yeah, it was near the start of the month, so why now? I look at Ben and Mia. I'm sorry, there were more per pertinent issues at that at the time in goal. I had to keep pushing this back to handle things like the audit paperwork and an excessively heavy breath leaves Smith Scarlet's mouth. You should have given me the reports for this as soon as it happened. Miss Keller looks at Ben as he, sh as he frowns. This needs to be resolved by the end of the day, Benjamin. His, I knew his name was Benjamin. Her eyes turned my way. So please, please, so that we can finish this as soon as possible. While she spoke, my focus was on Mia. And the smile that crept on her face. From what from what Miss Morty has told me, it was you who instigated it in the first place. Care to explain? What? Principal Scala, Mia was the one who... We are aware that she caused the damage, Mr. Nido. Oh. The older woman leans forward with her pen and paper in hand. What we need to know is how this incident happened in the first place. I think we should hear Mia's side of the story first. Oh, you son of a... Since she was the one who... The one to inadvertently cause the damage after all. The red scale girl nods, holding out her hand as she begins. Miss Keller, uh, I'm just going to read this model's room voice because I do I can't bother voicing her. I was just trying to walk for Olivia that day when I was nowhere to show up to start skating on my case. I was trying to tell her that me and Olivia were just working on a project when, bam, he whips out his camera and blinds me with it. What, didn't she stab herself in the face with that tail mounted glitter bomb? And because uh, I couldn't see, I kept running into things or even knocking things over. I didn't mean to do that, Miss Keller. I know I have temper and trust me, Ben's been here helping me work on it and can't blame it. She can't be serious. I look at the principal and see that she's just listening to her lie right through her teeth. And this ain't even the first time he's done it. I tried talking to Oliver back in September. He pulled her away. I swear, he's been doing... Uh... <laughs> principal Scala, that... Shh. My jaw stems shut bitterly as the principal denies me the chance to defend myself. Her eyes turn downward to a particular stack of paper atop her desk, carefully scanning one page and flipping to the next. The silence of the room is unnerving as she flips through the pages, the page after page, finally breaking the, si the quiet by clearing her throat. Now, Mr. Nido, 
you can give me your side of the incident. Take a deep breath, I reiterate the, what Olivia and I had had told our former art teacher back when he had saved us from the blonde bitch currently glaring daggers at me. From the moment Mia took Olivia away to find them in the classroom too, when she slapped herself in the face of a glitter-covered poster. However, I decided to stretch the truth about why Mia was in the classroom with Olivia and only mentioned that she was harassing her. Last thing Olivia needs to be inter- interviewed about her own involvement in all of this. I did my best to remain collected, but recalling everything that happened reminds me of how Mr. Lanigan had always tried to look out for us. My throat dry as I continued on in spite of my faltering voice. By the time I finally get to the end, I sound more like a squeaking hinge than a, than a person. Mr. Nino? Principal Scallon's voice brought me back from, from my memories and into the room. Mia was sneering at me. Ben's eyes were knitted together in worry. And Principal, thank you, that's all I needed to hear. She moves from her desk and she gish, and the sheets of paper she's been looking for over in her hands once more. The principal stands directly in front of us, now with an unreadable expression. In addition to the report ourselves, our Ladikan left behind his account of what happened. In it, he described his, Mia's action as openly hostile and intentional. Actions that were only interrupted once he used... <sighs> Scala said in astonishment. Once he used the Astra's taser. However, it seems Ladikan left some things out of his report. There's no motive for anything that happened, no matter who was at fault. I'm not sure why he leaves something out like that, but it stands. There are far too many unknowns here for my liking. Now, I would like to give my the benefit of the doubt, especially at a time like this, but given the extent of the destruction and the previous... She was, she's struggling, man. Besides, making a big deal of this during an audit isn't going to look good for the school. I'm finding it hard to believe your intentions here are completely professional, Mr. McKnight. He freezes like a deer in headlights. Skylar grumbles to herself, placing a hand on her head while we all wait for the verdict. I feel bad for her. Between the mountains of paperwork and half dozen bucks of on her desk, it's easy to tell she's overworked. It would bring me no greater relief than to have you expelled out of my hands. Unfortunately, I don't have the time and energy to deal with this. Mia, you're suspended for three days and I'm marking your record again. Now, if you... If you three don't mind, leave my office and leave me be. She doesn't even look up at, at any of us. I look towards Ben, who looks both scared and relieved. And Mia, who looks positively overjoyed. She practically skips out of the office without another word, leaving both Ben and I to stare blankly for a few seconds. Another glare from Skellig sends us both out of the room on the instinct. So wait, is she suspended or is, is both me and her suspended? Seriously? That's it? It all hits me at once. She just gets to walk away? After everything she did to Olivia, she gets equivalently of a slap on the wrist? I watch as Mia happily strolls down the hall as a good distance ahead. That... That... Ingo, are you okay? Am I okay? Ben, what the hell are you thinking? On top of everything else, between our teacher dying and what Olivia's going through, could this not have... Fucking waited? Look, no, it. Okay. Is she alright? She crashed the wheelchair. She's stuck at home. She can barely leave her room, let alone at the house. And you're over here playing games with interpersonal drama like a school child. Inko, I'm sorry, are you? Because here you are dragging me halfway across the school so that crazy bitch can use me as a scapegoat where I just want to go home. And. And you're helping her by being her lawyer. Holy shit, dude. I used to have respect for you. Look, it's not like... It's not like that. The hell is it? It's hard to explain she... You know what? I'm already drained. I don't have the energy to spend on this. Nobody's actually in trouble. It's fine. My wizarding glad does his job as... Ben reluctantly, re- reluctantly backs down. So man, it's the best for her, for you, for Olivia, and for the school. I can't believe this. I don't know why Olivia hates you. I felt cruel satisfaction as my words lashed at Ben, his face growing more distraught. 
get your shit together, man. I turn to leave and get away from everything. Ingo, please, you don't understand. Yeah, I don't really, I really don't. Just listen to me, okay? No. Nothing else left to say about anything. Without, I feel leave without bothering to look back. By now, it's about lunchtime, meaning I can hang out with Damien and Liz. Definitely neither after all of this. After school, I took the metro back home to shower and put on some new clothes. As it turns out, my parents really were on a business trip for the weekend, as indicated by a sticky note on the fridge. Hmm. Randy opens the door to let me in. Ah, there you are. Damien mentioned that you'll be coming over later. Hey, Randy. Saying so girl, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind shoveling the snow off the driveway when you can. We would really appreciate it. I'll even pay you a couple of bucks for it. No need for the payment, sir. Uh, uh, thanks for letting me use. Let me letting me come unannounced again. Thanks a bunch, really. As Randy leaves, I collapse on the couch and let my head rest against the comforter. God, the whole thing with Ben and Mia really took a lot out of me. The way, the way of my heavy thoughts drag my head sideways until I can see Olivia's bedroom door. My eyes linger as I consider getting up to see her or just giving her some time to come out. She has to know I'm here now, right? She probably does. She also probably doesn't really want to do a silly knee walk thing again. I wonder how mad she'd be if I caught it on camera. A president then cuts off my view before sitting right next to me. Hey, you alright Inky? You were kinda out of it at lunch. For a moment, I considered telling Damien about what happened. But honestly, the last thing I want to do is bring up this sort of drama into what I could consider my safe haven. Yeah, I'm alright Damien. Just had a rough time at school and hoping to take my mind off it. Ah, that's pretty understandable. I mean, with what with, what, with everything that happened, that has been going on and all. If you only knew... Oh, fuck. Oh, so that's why people said they didn't really like Ben at all. Oh, I understand why. They yeah, tend to comfort me, gave me a pass my shoulder. Tell you what, I'll finish up my homework, then we can chill over a game of rock, ring, or something. Sounds good. Rock ring. Rock ring. I feel like it's like Elden Ring. Yeah, that sounds good. Sweet. Hello, alone again. My stomach is a flutter with butterflies that I get from the couch. Our other room is just a couple steps away, and each one stirs the butterflies even more. Once I reach it, I feel like I'm in the middle of a colossal monolith. Come on, Inko, you just gotta knock. Damn it, arms lift up. God damn it. God. Fucking damn it. <sighs> Stop shaking. Knock knock. I'm awake, Uncle Randy. It's me, Olivia. I hear a quiet shuffling before Olivia speaks up more loudly this time. Inko? Yeah, are you. Okay. Decent? Damn, you brain. Can I come in? Yeah, I just watch your step. Watch my step. My hands are still shaking as it makes con as, as it makes contact with the knob. With a deep coming breath, the butterflies finally start slowing down and I'm able to push the door open. And see blackness. O Olivia? The room is extremely dark. The only source of light is coming from the entryway. I take I have to take my sunglasses off and attempt to see through the darkness better. Olivia, what the heck happened in here? Why is it so dark? I make out Olivia shape in bed. Uh, no reason. Just been playing games all, the, all day in the dark. Thought it'd be fun. Well, I'm turning on the light. No, no, you'll ruin it. 
tried, I tried making the flashback sound. The room flickers to life. Olivia's bed has been rearranged into a nest of blankets with her in the middle. She lies caught on her side with a mul- multitude of old sketchbooks and loose paper piled around her. What a setup? Hi. Hey, well, that's cute. How did it get so dark? Olivia really shoots herself under the, her covers. Is this paint? Olivia, did you paint over your windows? Yes, yes, I, I did and I'm proud of it. Would you go and, why would you go and do that? Light coming in offended my blackened heart and my window became a canvas into a new darkness in my life. I am now my own greatest work of art, a living piece of despair. Oh, rip to Jesus. Olivia, you're not a living art exhibit. You got sad and painted your windows black. It's a performance piece. Now turn the light back on. Not happening. I go sit by the bed of Olivia and lean up a little and offer a spot closer to her. Okay, I want I want a screenshot of this. Hey, you okay? Oh no. She takes the spot, feeling the bed sink beneath me. Oh, Olivia takes the blanket. She wraps it and bundles them up higher on herself. What's all this paper for? Nothing. No, for nothing. Come on, you know what I mean. Pick up the torn cover of a notebook and see it's dated for three years ago. Have you been looking through all these all day? Head bobs and a good nod. It sure is a lot. But it's not enough. I should have done more. A team clenched with an involuntary hiccups and escapes me. God, I may as well just forget all of it. It's all useless. It crushes me to see her like this. But maybe getting her to talk about it will help her just a bit. I'd like to hear more. Olivia sniffles a bit and reaches her hand grasping in the air towards one of the pages in front of her. I lean forward to bring it closer. I'm going to start speaking louder because uh, I'm feeling the music will overtake the my voice. There's a soft whistling, whistling sigh while her watery eyes scan over the page. Yeah, see this one? Her hand pokes through the blanky cocoon landing on a crumpled page of a highly detailed poem. Ladigan sketch that one for me to show me how he draws hands. I see it. That's definitely his work. It isn't, isn't it? I never thought I never would have gotten anywhere without him and now I want I watch her bite back the urge to tear up. Hell oh, probably would never would wouldn't have stuck with art in general. I wanted him to be there when I made it. Made it? Yeah, made it across the finish line, you know. Well now you won't see me fail either. <laughs> Her mocking laughter is hollow as tears but at her eyes. Come on, don't say that. What's this one? That one? That was when I was struggling with form and I, go, I had to go back to fundamentals for a bit. That was tough. It was tedious, but he made, he made it fun. How about the spiral dated back to her freshman years in arm's reach? This one? Oh, that was embarrassing. I was barely able to draw back then. I don't judge you. You see my work. How could I? <laughs> Olivia suddenly pages through the bound notebook, recalling a memory associated with every page. With each turn of the page, her voice grew hoarser. Her hands tremble and her breaths are shorter and harsher. And when she comes to a sterile white page, Olivia breaks. I swear God, I've seen the sprites much, so much. I draw her into a hug as she cries. The poor girl crumbles completely as her energy is now going to a sorrowful wails. My own eyes stink, but I have to be strong for Olivia's sake. There's no words for her cries, only her regrets and anguish given voice and loud screams. Those don't last as her voice gives out, finally spent. 
is now simply letting the tears flow freely onto the blanket and my jacket. The notebook she held onto tightly finally releases, her tense grip having broken the binding and letting the pages drift downward individually. I don't think I want to play this game anymore. It's fucking hurting me. I bought, I bought this for $15 and I'm gonna make that $15 worth it. I don't know what Olivia was trying to do, but once the large pages had drifted down the, to the bed, her full body was pressing against my chest. Oh, I just wanna. I'm sorry, you can't see me do this, but. If it weren't for the wall behind me, I'd be on my back and held down by the tight gator. I mean, by the tight girl. I don't know what I said. Yeah, I think it's that girl. With my head practically atop hers, I feel the last rem remnants of her shuddering gasp. This didn't work. Such an idiot, why would it? She doesn't want to be thinking about Lannigan, moron. Okay, plan B. I clearly can't do this alone. Hey. Let's go to the living room, alright? No. Come on, it's too dark in here. How long will you keep the window like that? Uh, forever. Come on, that can't be healthy. We need sunlight. All of them protest by digging into my shoulder with her muzzle. Guts need sunlight too. Alongside, she knows I'm right. Promise me, promise to clean it up later? Okay, thanks. Really, I think we should head to the living room. Can you come with me? No, I want to stay here. Please. Dang it. Okay, can I at least pick out a movie or something from the living room? She nods her head in response. Alright, do you need anything? There's some soda in the fridge. Maybe some for the both of us. Alright, I move my legs over to the edge of the bed and hop off. Oh. Oliver guesses that a blanket comes up with me. Oh, what? oh my god. You weren't supposed to see that. Oliver, are you right? What happened? I think it was... Oh, I think I might know why. Oliver, is this frostbite for sure? Her eyes... It's either frostbite or too much pressure on her legs. I tried to... Walk. Oh no. Fuck. Ah. No. You what? Her hands drop along with her head. I don't know. With eyes drained of life, she stares at the mess of papers before me. For her, everything's gone. Nothing makes sense anymore. All I had is this hollow feeling, and I wasn't thinking at all. And Oliver looks up at me again, eyes pleading for something. I try for a miracle, okay? Do you blame me? To say. Does it hurt? Fine, it just tingles. Maybe it's the least. I mean, maybe that means there's still some feeling down, feeling below my knee. Isn't that good? No, it's not. You need a first aid kit or something. You go. It's not even that bad. I mean, what if it gets infected? I watch as Olivia gets ready to protest, but she finally sighs and in defeat. Fine, get it done, get it over with. I'll get, get, I'll go get Sophia. She probably knows how to. No, why not? I don't want them to know, right? Olivia, I'm not a doctor. I can't even remove a splinter without screwing everything up. Olivia casts her look aside. Man, she's not intending to follow up on this at all. Be right back, okay? Olivia softly whines. I just saw it. It says I got ending tree. What does it mean? What does it mean? Oh man, I wanna get ending four. I wanna get the prom ending. I wanna get the ending where they have knocked on this. In case I try to leave the room to search for anything that I might be able to help. I'll go rummaging through the house the medicine cabinet in the hotel. I managed to find an iPad, a first aid kit, and Neil. Listen, Damien's not around. He's probably still in his room. 
Alright, should be enough. I went to the find Olivia exactly where I left her. The first aid is placed on the bed next to her. Olivia efforts her gaze away from me as I tend to her wound. Then I squeeze a dollop of the medicinal cream on the injury and spread it evenly. Then I apply the ice pack to the wound and wrap the whole thing up with gauze, making sure not to make it too tight. Although my work is clumsy, it takes 3 or 4 tries and maybe 10 minutes to get it right. Alright, I think that should do it. Let me know if it, if it gets too, too cold. I look up to see Olivia still looking away from me, giving her best pouty expression. I know you don't like being taken care of, but I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, well, it's still weird. Raise a gentle hair on the side of Olivia's doubt, Jenny coaxing her to look back at me. Feeling better, she still tries to look annoyed, even as I use my thumb to press her cheek. the guy uh, I just opened up a guy it says that for ending one I need to make sure Nidia get any points two I need for ending two I need to make sure Olivia only gets four points for ending three I need to only for ending three which I'm getting right now is that I only have four po no, four points and for ending four it's me and Olivia both have four points <sighs> but um I don't know, need to worry. Because I think chapter select. Score set score for ending. I think I can use this. But for now. Oh fuck. Um Shit. I. Oh. No. Ah, fuck. I accidentally pressed the bar. Okay, so. Accidentally, uh. Uh. But don't worry. Uh, using. I think using that thing, right? I think I can get ending. I don't know how it will work, but... Yeah, that's where I went off on then. Okay, me and... Me and... Damien. No. Yeah, I see I got ending 3. I tried for a miracle, okay? Do you blame me? I don't know what to say. Is it her? Okay. So, I got this. 
finally try to just get over with it. Okay. I'm not a doctor. She cast her little side. Man, that's not shit. I returned to find Olivia exactly where I left her. The first aid kit is placed on the bed next to her. Olivia adverts her gaze from me as I tend to her wound. Grabbing the neolithin, I squeeze a doppler of the medicinal cream on the injury and spread it evenly. Then I apply the ice pack to the wound and wrap it. I wrap the whole thing with a gauze, making sure not to make it too tight. Although my work is clumsy, it makes 3 or 4 tries and maybe 10 minutes to get it right. Alright. I think that should do it. Let me know if it gets too cold. I look up to see Olivia looking away from me, giving her best pouty expression. I know you don't like being taken care of, but I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, well, it's all weird. I place her gentle head on the side of her snout, giving gently coursing her to look back at me. Feeling better? She, she still tries to look annoyed at me, even as I use my thumb to caress her cheek. Eventually, the last of her defenses fall, and a faint, pain smile forms across her face as she, she nestles further into my head, into my hand. Yeah, a bit. Good. With that taken care of, I finally breathe a sigh of relief. Now to figure out the next issue. How to get her to the living room. She's definitely not going to do her silly knee walk and not of how her knee is currently. Her currently looks like the world's largest scrape. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but G's description. Only that left only one real option. So give me legs for one about to, one about to go through. With the utmost care, I slowly strike the living room of Olivia in my arms. I can feel her claws dig into my back of my jacket and her tail bumping against my leg. Get in. Charge. Getting through the door was a struggle, but Olivia coaches me through it and even shuts the door with her tail. Damien laying on the couch engrossed in some game. He turns to see us at the sound of Olivia's door closing. Hey, there you guys are! Vinny waves from her, the recliner. Liv! Inky! Must have, you must have gotten home while I was bandaging Olivia's leg. Hey guys. Oh, why are you carrying her like that? My wheelchair is busted, remember? I know, but you know, always scoot, like to scoot around your knees. For a moment, Olivia, I look, Olivia and I lock eyes, not knowing how to answer. Inky, just, Inky's just helping Liv, is all, Finn. Okay, I don't care how long this dream goes for, I'm going to reach the ending of number 3. Inky is just helping Liv, is all, Finn. Oh, thank goodness, he's caught on. Oh, ah, because they're practicing, right? Ha, ah, something like that. Damien moves his legs to make room for Olivia. Well, have a seat. So, what's up? I set her down on the couch. Just wanted to be out here for a while. Get some extra company? For sure, for sure. Well, I'm just wiping the floor with Vinny in War Club 40. War Hammer? War Hammer? Space Marine? He's not. My switch over to something else soon if this war fest is the end. You want to give it a shot? The, con the comment is directed at Olivia. It ricochets to me when he doesn't get a response. Well, I don't play games as much at all, but sure. Come on, Olivia. I'll be a, I'll need a mentor. I look to Olivia who merely nods at the Damien mini me. Awesome, I'll grab the other controllers. Vinny uses the footrest of the Rekina as a springboard to the plastic bin of controllers. With the younger boy busy, Oliver takes the opportunity to readjust herself, sliding herself closer until she's hip to hip with me. Here you go. Vinny offers two translucent controllers. But I take the other one. Oh, I take one Oliver holds up her hand. 
I'll sit this one out. For now, little man. Aww, okay. Controller in hand, I guess the brothers a thumbs up. All the eye, all, all eyes on the screen now, we start. I have no clue what is happening. There's so much happening on the screen, I can't tell which section of the screen I'm in. All I can tell is a lot of green things screaming in cockney and a lot of viscera. I don't think this is appropriate for Vinny, but then again, he's getting, he's really getting into it. Darn those green, dirty green skins. Don't worry, brother. They'll be clean with holy fire. Brother, I have been pinned. In the corner of my eye, Olivia is leaning forward. She's slowly becoming engrossed in the mayhem on display, and her tail slumps with a massive stomp. Our in-game avatars deliver to the green snout shouty things. Focus back on the screen. The, f the fiery particles effect in heavy blam continues. I don't know how long it went, just that just by the end of the stage or whatever, there were cramps in my hand in spots I could never knew could cramp. Some animation plays out on the screen, giving me a rep rep reprieve to set the controller down on my lap. So how'd I do? You see the rank on the screen by your guy there? No, there's only one next to yours and Vinny's. Well, there you go. Oh. I never played Warhammer 40k, so I don't know. Fine. I know a bit of it, but not too much. You suck pretty bad. Give me mine. I picked up, I pick up her controller on the floor and she takes it. With some practice motion, she enters the match. Alright, I'll show you how you really play this game. Now with Olivia and our squad, she managed to pick up my slack. Watching Olivia play with and with her tutorship, I start to get the hang of the game. For a moment, I look away from the virtual bloodshed and see that Olivia is enjoying herself. Surrounded by her folks playing this silly game for a few hours. For a while, she feels a little, a little better. A few games later, there's a knock on the door. Javini jumps up to get it. Hi, Dad! The figure stumbles into the blizzard and removes his heavy jacket. Jeez, this weather. Hey, all. Inko, they expect you to still be here there. Good evening, Randy. Randy tosses down the bag of, bag of salt that, is, that on his shoulder to the living room floor of a loud thud. Playing games together, I see. I hope that means you, you all got your homework all squared away. Yeah, it's taken care of. Vinny threw his in the garbage disposal roll. I didn't. See, he's denying it. Hey, hey, work up. Club like her. Huh? Probably got a more use out of the game than me by now. Now, your record's still here. Wanna join us? And he sucks the air into his teeth. Tempting. Very tempting. But it's my turn to figure out dinner tonight. Aw, oh, come on, Pops. You better get time to relax like this. I know, but rules are rules. Plus, I hate to see a mom cook after enduring all that cold. Where thing is more frozen than an ice cube. Something warm, warm does not does sound good right about now. Oh, I just remembered. Hold on, I think I got something. Uh huh. I hold out the coupon I was compensated with from the art contest. Two large top, two top topping from thirteen for thirteen bucks. I'm sure. I'm unsure if Damien or Vinny's face lights up with more at the mention of pizza, but Randy outshines both of them by the same price drop. Even Olivia's heartbeat slightly intensifies. Holy moly, that real? I pass it over to him. I've been saving it for a while. Seems like a pretty good time. Well, Alright, let's make it a pizza party then. And it takes a moment to dial the number and set make the order. I go check in on Olivia, who looks just as aesthetic as the paint brother. It's just pizza, no need to hyperventilate. I so need this right now. I'll I'll still be about a half a I'll it'll still be about half an hour. What's your favorite? Anchovies. Really? Yeah, they don't sell much these days, so something to keep in mind. When he finishes his call and gives a celebratory fist bump. 
you're a life saver in Go. I was planning on getting together some sashimi or something. Sophia said she finally wanted to try my speciality. Whew. We got two large meat lovers coming in. And this place is pretty fancy. You got that stuff you like, Olivia. So I asked for an extra pie. Pop high with as much as they can put on it. Olivia's ice cream with joy. I said, oh. Oh, it sucks that I got MP3. I don't know like the context behind MP3, but I know it's like people say it's like bittersweet. I think I I, I know people say like MP4 is a good ending. MP1 and MP2 is like they don't want to talk about it, and MP3 is like bittersweet. <sighs> oh, sorry, I'm a bit tired. I woke up very late today. Oh, if you didn't know, yesterday my stream was very long. I uh, um, I kept up with editing the videos. No, I wouldn't say editing, but like I was like removing some music so it wouldn't copyright my videos, and I had to edit the thumbnails. And it was like really late in the night by the time I posted it. So, uh, if you want to check it out, you can go to my YouTube channel. But that is for the uh, Twitch viewers, of course. For people who are watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Alright, the king, this is the king in the house. Somebody give me a turn. I forfeit my controller to the pe patriarch. He gracefully takes it and shoots, shoots Vinny off his seat. The other one repositions himself on the carpet. As I watch the family play together, I feel a pang of jealousy. Especially as Randy and the brothers banter with one another, really getting into their on-screen character. Brother, I am pinned! While Olivia remains silent, I see a smile tugging at her lips as her finger hammers away at her controller's button. Look, when I get a better laptop in the future, right, I swear the first I may or may not play with Warhammer. It's a 50-50 chance, but I wanna play some I wanna play some shooting games. Cause I don't think my laptop can handle Half-Life. It struggles with a bit with Gmod because I installed too many mods, but Half-Life I'm not too sure. I tried to picture my own family in their place, but the image is so surreal that it could be displayed as a piece of modern art. Shaking off those thoughts, I return my focus to the television and the hyper-violence on display. Still no clue what's happening on screen. I want to ask Randy, Randy what about War Club is all about, especially with all the funny accents being thrown around. Maybe Olivia can film me in later. As far as I can tell, it's just dudes in the serious looking armor, fighting really ugly aliens that happen to have British accents. R Randy, I thought you'd be trying to prep those fish I bought by now. Change the plans. They go through us and offer. I couldn't refuse. It's a pizza party now. The dino patriot looks up, looked at his watch and as if summoned by the simple gesture, a series of knocks sound off from the front door. That would be our dinner. Randy heads for the door with a hand already reaching for his wallet. Pizza party? Christmas isn't until next month, isn't it a little early to start with this sort of thing? Oh, and this, is, this shit's getting too... Uh, of course not, that's why it's time for a little fun. It's Friday night. Randy returns with the boxer stacked on his arms. Let's dance! He sets the boxes on the kitchen table and hands his wife the used to cook on. Well, alright then. See? Okay, everyone get a plate. Get some. Feel free to make a mess if you want clean up. If you want clean up duty. Damien and Vinny leap from their position and have their place in a blink of an eye. There is filled with the delicious scent of sauce and cheese as Randy opens up all the boxes. You know, maybe I might end stream around like. Nah, 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 I can keep on going. I can keep on going. Damien Vinny immediately drives for the meat lover's pizza like a ravenous shark. The pepperoni sausage on the table looks appealing, but Randy passes a plate with a slice of anchovy pizza over to Olivia. Thanks, Uncle and Randy. Dang, the anchovy one looks actually looks pretty good. I don't want to get out for, to get my own plate though. See Olivia, could I try it? Snap. 
fine. I count the fingers in my hand to make sure it's still intact. Oh, come on, I just want to see what it's like. Eh, uh, the old glower. Ha, huh, good luck with that, Iko. I've considered what I could do to get Olivia to share. And I recall something so long ago that it feels like a lifetime ago. I will slowly reach for Olivia again. She bares her teeth at me. But instead of going towards the box, my hands land on her tail and slowly pet the muscular appendage. The tip of her tail starts to wag happily and the guitar girl's anger melts away, only to flat out when she pulls her tail away from me. Oi! Her face is red with embarrassment. Do I have a bite now? Nope. Her mouth snaps shut as my hand reaches for her tail again. Inko! I give the appendage a gentle scratch this time, and then once again pull away. How about... Okay, I get it. She holds out and holds a slice out for me to bite. My pizza is absolutely, absolutely smothered beneath the pepperoni and anchovies. But only one bite. With how greasy this thing is, I don't think I'd survive a second. Still, I bring a plate close and, and slide the pizza to the edge. Taking a sampling bite from it. Good, right? But I still don't know what Inko's support falls and band story falls means. These are two I don't get. I know it's like how they feel towards each other, but I don't understand the story and the support. I still need to. F I feel the need to rapidly devour the single slice now, but instead chose to savor the flavor with minuscule bites. Yeah, holy crap, this is good! It is, but the only bite you're getting. You sure? I wiggle my finger at her and she, she promptly swats my hand. No, I mean, yes. She tries to hold a glare, but I can see her lips quivering with a uh, mirth. I hand her back the plate and she resumes consuming her extra fishy slice. Damien hands me another plate, this time with a slice covered with various meat. And while the one, that one was deli still delicious, then a direct kiss flavor anchovy pizza was the best thing I've ever tried. Oh, when I get to get ending three, I want to get ending four of all time. The festivities continue even after the pizzas I've were finished. Oh. Sorry, I'm just. I, I just need to. Um, I my eyes hurt. Okay, get back to it. I never had have pizza often, but whoever this bold fella is, hands down makes the best in town. Inside, Damien and Vinny decide to break out a plethora of different party games for us to play. No one bothered to keep track of time, we were all too en enraptured by the pixelated entertainment before us. Which is just how I missed my last chance home. Miss Payne didn't look too upset though. In fact, I think they expected me to spend the night again. Especially with how Randy had been so quick to pull, something, to pull out some blankets and pillows for me. Both of the parents insisted I stay and it's not like I could realistically walk home. So once again, I'm staying over. I currently sat at the foot of the couch with Olivia. And we're both bundled up to stay off the chilly winter night. The soft growling purr that Olivia makes 
when she's content has become almost therapeutic to me. So how are you feeling? Hmm? Better. Thank you. For dragging me out here, I didn't know how much I needed it. I'm glad. Her palm wraps around my left hand and she gives me a little smile. A gentle smile, followed by a colossal yawn. Ready to hit the hay? She shakes her head. I don't want to go back in my room. I want to stay out here with you. Randy will probably kill me. I'll buy him back. Come on, I'll see you in the morning. Oliver yawns again, driving her to accept for her need for sleep. After carrying Olivia to her room, oh, fuck my arm. I sleep on the couch once more. And as I lay the couch, parasing through the past few days, the thoughts wrap into a dream. And one, one in which Olivia and I both stood before that park fountain, make, making a happy wish for the future. Mornings in the pain residence were lively, to say the least. Or maybe it's because it's Saturday. This is to say my weekend sleep schedule was cut far shorter than I would have liked. Mostly by Damien's little brother landing feet first on my chest and knocking the air out of my lungs. Inky! That's the second time in a row. I sputtered and sat in an attempt to get back some precious oxygen. Hey Vinny immediately sat on the pillow I had used. Good morning Vinny. A check on my phone says that it's half past seven. Four hours too early. <laughs> DV focused the life with many such looking through the channel to at a speed only he can comprehend. Morning and go. Sorry about the wake up call as Vinny's favorite season. Winter? Hockey. Vinny chants loudly as, and I look to the screen to see a, a player being brutally slammed into the protective glass of the ice rink. Ah. Olivia up, it, up yet? Damien shrugs. Probably not. You guys were so were up pretty late last night. Plus it's the weekend. Best just to let her sleep off the food coma. She'll come out of her room eventually. Fair enough. As much as I would enjoy sleeping in as well, Damien and Vinny will have taken occupancy over my pseudo bed. Oh, I'm getting... Oh, sorry, I'm... Sorry, chat. I think I'll end stream around like 11, 4, 11 30 or maybe 11 40. See if my uh, hand can deal with another day of clicking the same mouse button over and over again. There's the recliner next to us, but I'm not going to defile what must be Randy's throne. <laughs> Might as well stay up then, I guess. Mind if I get a bowl of cereal? Help yourself, amigo. At least I can check on any updates with my blogs. I head into the kitchen, made myself a bowl, to being sure to add some sugar and honey from the condiments cupboard from this time. Taking a seat at the table, I began scrolling through my fo my phone's feed while shoveling cereal into my mouth. Barely a minute in before I realized that I'm not even reading anything on my phone screen. There are words, but they aren't saying anything, just paragraphs of probably fake personal events and fake calls to action. Have they always been this vapid? I decided to finish my breakfast without any liter literally TV static distracting me. Afterwards, I rejoined Damien and Vinny in the living room, both of whom are absolutely enthralled by the hockey game playing on, on, playing on the TV. The 
With every hit of the puck or rope, shoulder check, the brothers explode with either excitement or devastation. The, also, the two also took turns assaulting me with more hockey trivia than I'll ever be able to, be u- to use. Partially about... Particularly about Vinny's favourite goalie. And then he got into a fight with the entire hockey team and was transferred to this one. He's great. He's not great. He just like him because he gets into the most fights. Yes. I'm sure I like the sports. Heck yeah, the games are just my kind of thing. That guy that's right up there right now is also cool. He's... Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, that's a little bull. Why did it, why did it, McDonald get that penalty? The, that guy sucks. Vinny language. Sorry. Vinny, tell him about your collection. Oh yeah, I got all the bobblehead for this team. Let me show you. Ah, I'm missing the, I'm mixing up the voice. Does he, he, does he actually like the sports team or just the constant balling? Is there really much of a difference? Yeah. Just is that, yeah, he actually likes it despite the ice. We should play some street hockey sometimes when it warms up. You up? Nah, it's always... It, no, not if only if this if it's that chaotic. Relax, it's a protective gear you can use. That's not the... Po- Here they are. The young boy dumps an armful of beaten up plastic figures on my lap. Oh wow, that's a lot. Vinny grins as he takes each bobble, wobbly headed figure and gives me a brief explanation of who exactly they are. This bruiser here, he's known for his mean right hook. Oh, oh and with this description like that, I'm absolutely sure I'd rather sell any game involving Vinny. He'd probably like he'll probably be the person to run up and hit me in the balls. Soon enough I feel a distinct vibration in my pocket. Pulling out my phone, I check my blue to see a message from Olivia. Still cracked? Ding ding, room service, contract me out of bed. Turns out she, could, she need help. After all, there's no way she's dragging herself anywhere with that knee. I excuse myself from the living room and head towards Olivia's room, where Damien giving me an approving nod. Sorry, I just remember. Like, I just remember a cringe moment. Morning sleepyhead, morning stupid head. If Olivia's wound is being hanged, her is even more difficult than ever. I have to admit, but I almost dropped her at least twice on the way. Thanks, thank Raptor Genius for Coach Sally's training. <sighs> but here we are at last. Now come back to the land of the living. Morning, Livia. Olivia's eyes still closed, mumbles out what sounds like good morning as I sat her down on the couch. How are you feeling? Alright, I guess. Still a bit groggy. How? What about, you know? I pet my knee, which Olivia seems to pick up. Alright, feels a bit better. Tingly feeling's gone, but still swollen. You might need to redress it, then hopefully it should be more manageable by Monday. By the way, what did you do with the ice pack? Oh, Gus is using it as a water bed. Sure hope it doesn't pop. Stagnant ice pack water sounds terrible to be in. Yeah, I made the mistake of opening an ice pack with scissors and playing with the ice inside. I would never forget the feeling of my head. Damien and Minnie start shouting as the home team gets the final score. What a slap shot! Heard the excitement in the room, watching hockey again. Sophia settles herself on the recliner, opening up her laptop. Oh, the school's weekly newsletter just came in. Turn on the volume, Damien. Sure thing. Alright, first it says basketball team game this Friday against the Tail Spikes. In preparation for finals, tutoring will be open after school for everyone that needs it. Damien. I gotta come at Ma, Ma Bliss helping at me out. I hope so. Senior, senior it is won't be. Senior Re, Re, this won't be tolerated here. 
Oh, this is interesting. To all our students, you'll be invited to St. Hammond's School 201 M 2023 BCA Winter Formal. Winter Formal? Damien yawns and stretches his arms behind his back. Yeah, some event for, for seniors they got every year. Basically a dance but more fancy. It's like the biggest event of the year. You know, next graduation or prom or whatever. I don't think any of my previous schools ever did something like this. Just regular dancers. Immerse yourself in the serene beauty of the wintry night sky with music, food, entertainment, and much more. We will also be hosting a special memorial for one of Sam Hammond's finest teacher all. Hmm. Shoot, that's gonna be tough to see. The event will take place at the Vocadria Convention Center on Friday, December 15th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Four hours long. You know, I fun fact. Back in secondary school, I had a prom, and when I, and it's like my, also accounted as my graduation, and I gotta tell you, I wish I was young again. Bro, that, that shit just happened last year. I graduated last year, and my first year at ITE is almost ending. I'm almost becoming old. Tickets to the for the formal winter formal are now on sale online or. In Mitz Proclin's class in room 211, $15 for one and 30 for couples. Please read our event dress code to know what will and will not be allowed for the formal. Have a great weekend. Go Feather Tales. Well, it seems like you three have something to look forward to next month. Miss Payne closes her laptop with a smile and sets it aside. Mom, it's about time. She gets and checks the clock on the wall. I nearly forgot. Really get your kimono on. I'll start the car. It's called a G, Mom. I'll probably be running some errands while he's at karate practice, so I'll be out until dinner. I'm sure Vinny didn't mean to karate chop him by his as he got up. He's just super eager to get to class. <laughs> The background from Oliver helps clear my airway quicker at least. Well then, Damien switches on some game and stumps in his familiar position in the recliner in mere seconds. I don't even know how to keep track of the blur of colours on screen. I feel like it's going to give me a seizure if I look too hard. So you two are going together and smooching, right? A powerful crushing force attempts to pulverize my finger into mulch. Oh my god, Damien, you can't just start a conversation like that. Oliver's hands relents and leaves my palm, <laughs> feeling tender. Relax, I'm joking. Sorry now. My arm around my shoulder and all. Yeah, your arm around my shoulder and all. How did that get there? I go to remove it, but Olivia holds on tight. Well, you plan on going to the Winter Formal Blizz? Hell yeah, why would I? That was a fast answer. She shrugs. You, well, formal, I don't... <clears throat> but I mean, I'm stuck at home, you know? Crap, yeah, I, I know when... When will you be getting a Christmas chair? Could be a week, could be longer. The mail system around here is annoying. Jeez. Hey, I'll come visit every day after school. Oh, thanks. Still, I there's at least a week of her not stepping foot outside. Damien was only half joking about us going to the winter formal, and that's definitely a good idea. But first, hey Olivia. Hmm. When you get your wheelchair back, we can go anywhere. Where do you want to go? Anywhere. Wait, so you're asking me out? She falls eerily silent as she turns her head towards me, eyes wide open. Yeah, I'm asking you out on a date. Take you anywhere you like. Oliver's eyes, 
her lips mouth open and closes while she looks at me in astonishment. Uh, Olivia, you okay? Oof! I found myself trying not to laugh. Olivia threw herself at me in the strongest hug I've ever felt. Her arms and even her tail wrapped around me, pressing me tightly against her as she laughs at it in that cute grimly giggle of hers. And while that giggling is infectious, my face is pressed against Olivia's t- ample bosom. Come on, you guys, get a room. No? Too happy. Getting a little hard to breathe now. Gosh, this is the first good thing that will happen in forever. And ending three is bittersweet. I don't want bittersweet. It's either a good or there's a bad ending. Stick to a good ending. Please, new game. Please, why are you gonna hurt me? I spent money on your game. Okay, I support it. I'm your number one fan. I have edits of my only hug the gator on my TikTok. <laughs> why are you hurt me like that? I can't even move my arms. Olivia's caught them against my own sides. Wait, she's shifting. Now, oh, size now, I can pull my head up enough to take in some air. So when work, ah, sweet death roll. So that's what's happening as I feel myself flipped over for Olivia a split second, then back, and then I am back to being beneath her. And again, and then back again, just enough time to breathe. Olivia, we haven't even decided where to go. I feel like I'm on some kind of personal carnival ride, being spun widely around across the room. Olivia and Olivia's arm. It's fun but very dizzy. When a getting girl finally ties herself out, I find I find myself laid atop her. And while I could I should feel very embarrassed about our compromising position. Oh yeah, yeah, they didn't even speak in the chat, but... If I see someone on the internet say I'm weird or I'm a furry, guess what? I gladly give no fucks. I'm grinning at the air, looking down at my equally happy and light-headed girlfriend beneath me. Good, Inko? Pretty well response for just asking where a date would be. Doesn't matter, her voice shrinks even so enough as close as I am to her. I was hoping for so long. Seeing that gentle smile of her, it sets my heart a flutter. So where do you want to go? You decide. I got nothing. Me? No way I can take Olivia to really show her a good time. How about a picnic? See if it warms up a bit and check out some of the more scenic places around. Vocadria is beautiful. I want to explore it a bit. So do I. For a brief moment, the connection between Olivia and I feels stronger than ever as we stare into each other's eyes until she goes right back into keeping me in her warm, skilly embrace. It was right it was right in the middle of the living room with Damien and still present, but <laughs> none of it that matters. Damien is like the fucking third wheel because I don't know if he's dating Liz yet. But he I think in ending four they'll probably be dating. That's why I gotta do ending four right after ending three. They have to do ending one and two. But uh oh hey chat. I remember I saw like there was like a fan made ending 5 where it's like Inko proposing to Olivia it's like the most sweetest thing ever it was before I knew I wanted her to get her but uh it was popular but uh, who gives a shit but uh, but I, w- I would give shit because I want them to be married and shit I want them to be happy but the rest of the day was spent in their living room playing more games on their old TV I was who blind Olivia kept switching up games. I think she was trying to find something that I would particularly enjoy. Or at least be good at. Oh, I just want this. Oh. oh 
Oh yeah, today's Thursday. Not be Friday. Yeah. Friday I'll be streaming tomorrow. Saturday I'll stream tomorrow and Sunday I will take a long, long break. I, I will go on like a semi hiatus. Um until uh, I will take a, like a very long semi hiatus. I won't take a very long, I'll still try to stream on like Saturday, definitely not Sunday, but around like Friday or Saturday because uh, I got my school schedule and I don't get a day off, which sucks. Uh, but somewhere around like November to December, I have to like kind of lock in for my studies because that's when my final exam is taking place. But not to worry, after a few weeks, I'll be available and oh, so much has happened. Shame that, that I have to have been more lacking of any game talent at all. We still, we all still have fun at least. When the sun began to set, though, I decided I should head home. I decided to a shower and change clothes, and both Damien and parents were still out. I felt bad when I left Damien's place that night. Or rather, I felt bad looking at Olivia as I walked away from his house. I only grew worse as I went from the metro to my quiet neighborhood and ultimately our empty house. Seeing the small pile of letters at the front door made me realize what, what, what that feeling was. Loneliness. Maybe I should have waited to ask the pain if I could spend this spend the entire weekend. If I did that, would I be overstaying my welcome? I don't want to abuse the hospitality after all. Ping! Withdrawing my phone from my pocket, I see that Oliver just sent me a new doodle. Coming tomorrow? Well, I can't handle a little loneliness for now. Sure. Kicking my door open, I head to my computer so I can continue talking to her online. I lose track of how much time I've spent me instant messaging and sharing videos, but by the time I check my computer clock, I realize it was past midnight. I didn't even go to my typical routine of checking for updates to my forum and blogs. Shoot, I'm going to be exhausted tomorrow. Totally worth it. The next few days were uh, very similar to the first. Visiting the Payne's residence, hanging out with Olivia's family became my new routine after school. On Monday, I got into shoveling the snow off the driveway like Randy had asked me for. It was laborious to do, but it felt good to get it done. It felt even more rewarding when Randy thanked me eh, with some sashimi he mentioned during the weekend. Oh god, I you know, I really want to know what happened with Ben. That, that, I don't know why I'm thinking about it now, I just want to know what happened with Ben. Eventually, I had gotten in the habit of leaving sticky notes for my parents, letting them know where I was. Not that they care too much as long as I'm home by bedtime. I won't lie, spending most of my afternoons watching Vinny and Damon yell at the TV wasn't particularly entertaining, but Olivia's presence was enough for me. Friday, Nuru, no, while Vinny and Damien were preoccupied by a foam swat duo in the backyard, I decided to plan for our date. The weather that weekend was supposed to be warm, and I managed to convince Olivia that this would be our last chance for a real picnic. The only leads the location. We've been arguing well into the night over text, trying to decide where to go. I think the beach would be nice. He's gonna say something about sand. No way, the marine layer with will screw with the weather. How about we go back to the arcade? Seriously, that place smelled horrible. Haha, <laughs> you're right. There's somewhere worth going in Volcaria Bluffs anyway. Volcaria Bluffs, huh? Does Volcaria, does Volcaria actually have bluffs? Yeah, dummy. Yeah, dummy. The place was named after them. Have you ever seen them? No. Sounds perfect then. But those are ages away. Come on, I'll be fine from home for a bit. Fin, uh, I'll be over in the morning then. So, oh, since. So Fine. Okay, sure, mighty night. Nine, oh, 99. I left my phone rest on the table as I smiled to myself. 
I'll have to look out exactly where the bluffs are in the morning, but I'm sure they'll look nice. And if not, well, there's ought to be something exciting there. After searching our destination and getting dressed, I did one last check of myself to make sure I hadn't forgotten anything. Wallet, phone, water bottle, extra sunglasses, written instructions for the metro lines we have to take, officially ready to go. Before I leave, I make sure I make sure to leave a sticky note on the fridge to let my parents know where I'll be. Maybe they'll finish watching daytime television in time to see it before I got I get home. Ha. Huh. It's only a short trip to the closest station to Olivia's neighborhood and a short walk from there to her house. Payne's place is as welcoming as ever. It's starting to feel like a second home by now. In the chill weather, the yard's growth has slowed, but it's starting to peek through the thin layer of snow. I hope I'm not commissioned to go now to Should let Olivia know I'm here. I'm here, you ready? I'll be out in a minute. Is this, is the door locked? No, 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 don't come in yet. What? Just stand by the curb and be there. And be ready, this is gonna be cool. Oh boy. I stand by the curb as instructor facing the door. And after the moment, it swings open and... Whoosh! She's wearing a flower a green blur shoots out of the door and di is directly for me. I bet I know better than to flinch. Olivia slams to the ground and breaks her to a halt in a stylish skin. And she got a new wheelchair! You're here! I am. And it looks like you finally got your wheelchair. Yeah, it came in just yesterday. They want to tell you to make it a surprise. Mm, has the has the new wheelchair smell. Dummy. Well, it looks the same, I do notice how it's hatching uh, all the old, scarring her original one hat. So, did you hear it? Hear what? Exactly. I can sneak up on you now. In your dreams. So, are you ready for our date? There's a sudden rush of jittery nerves in my chest. It is my first time taking someone out on a date. Trying to rationalize it still didn't help my nervousness though. Yeah, I'm ready. She looked at me with a tinted smile, hands held together as she tilts her head slightly. She's wearing a new floral hair clip. Come to think of it, it's the first time I've actually seen her work ever accessorize. I uh... Huh? The hair clip looks cute, Olivia. The worry of her grin melts away into a full, fully joyous smile. Thank you, Inko. Which also helps to ease my own. With my renewed confidence, I step uh, around Olivia and go to grab handlebars. Oh wait, you've been out all week, probably don't need any help. No, it's fine. I take a tail, uh, her tail takes my wrist and guides me, gets my hand to the handle. I don't mind at all. Alright, to the metro station. Yes, please. Well, Olivia, home. I'll take the kids. Funny thing. This is where I'll be ending for tonight. But I'll return tomorrow with an even longer stream. I promise. I promise longer stream. No, no. Saturday, even longer stream. I promise. I promise. Let's quit. I don't want to stream too much, but today because um, ah, you see, Zelda Zone Zero came out of a new event, and I kind of want to finish it. And I uh, I got things to do in my life, but uh. Thank you guys for watching my stream. Let's go raid somebody. Oh, I also didn't know I got a new follower. Marin also won. Thank you for following my thank you for following my Twitch channel. Hi, my name is uh probably I, I don't I don't have an intro. Uh, I'm just gonna say hi, my name is Martian and I'm a bunny I'm a bunny girl. 
the big air quotes. I wish to be a girl. Uh, you guys can you can check out my YouTube channel where my post like daily shit posts or vods. But uh, yeah, let's see who we can raid. Raid, 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 raid. Uh, fresh raid. Uh, I have so much planned out during December. And I hope I hope I'll still be happy enough to stream because uh school's gonna take a ho a large toll on me. Whew, but uh I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.